Listen, let's talk about uh, Samantha. First of all, how is she now? How is her health? She's the best that she's ever been. Brilliant, yeah, brilliant, she brilliant. still suffers with OCD on a daily basis, hence the film is a typical depict of what challenges she faces on a daily basis. But no, she's happy and healthy and she's living her life. Uh, OCD, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. Yes. What, what does it mean? OCD is a deep-rooted, anxiety-based mental illness that totally and utterly torments the sufferer. It's debilitating for both the sufferer and their carers. And you could be washing your hands 20 times a day. Uh, you think the oven's been left on, you keep going back into the house. Yeah, I think, in, I think OCD is still woefully misunderstood and extremely trivialised. Um, a lot of people just use it in flippant ways, or oh, I've got OCD, but for the actual sufferer, it's like having a bully inside your head constantly telling you what to do and having to listen. To and things have to be a certain way, otherwise the, the, the person suffering OCD becomes very distressed. Yes, um, well, it's, it's not just about that. It's whatever OCD attacks a person's weakness, so whatever their weakness is, it can be cleanliness, it can be, um, like for Sam, it's all around food because of the eating disorder, so it's manifested itself in food now. Yeah. Um, but it's whatever, it, it, can, it comes in many different guises. Uh, eating disorders are an epidemic in our society, yeah, aren't they? Sadly. My 16 year old son said that his, you know, in his sort of social group, he, it's, it's just, it's everywhere. Uh, it's not an isolated example of one really unlucky girl. No. And we, we, of course, we know that eating disorders affect men too. Um, what about Sam? How old was she when there were clues something was wrong? Um, my girl Sam's a twin and they're 31 now and Sam at the age of 13 was diagnosed with the early stages of anorexia, nervosa and OCD and we spent the next few years um, looking at both private and NHS therapies and to no avail my family very expensive as well it's expensive it's not just about the money though it's about Sam we were losing Sam Every, everywhere we went we went with hope that it would be the right one to help her and um, it was affecting the family. The family was falling apart because it doesn't just affect the sufferer, it affects everyone around them as well. Um, so how many years were, were you pursuing treatment? She started at, at 13. About four. Four years. And in those yeah. four years, she, she, just, she, she continued to lose yes, weight? Yes, she did. And, um, right. and she was getting worse. We were losing her. And I took the very unorthodox decision to discharge her and work with her myself with the help of our GP, the girls' school, and our family and friends. So you took her out of hospital or, or a clinic? She never. Where, where was she? she was always in daycare. She never went right. in overnight because I was very adamant that I but didn't But you want essentially that for her. eliminated the NHS's role in her life? Yes, I did, yeah. Mm. Would, you, would you be a critic of the approach they took? No, it just wasn't. It works for some, but it just wasn't working for us. Mm. Yeah. What was different about your approach, Lynn? I think. I, I learned through Sam and we talked and it's not just about the lens of the illness, it's about the person themselves and often or not mental illness is derived from low self-esteem so it's about building their self-esteem and I think in today's society a lot, especially the kids and indeed some of the adults, they've lost their identity, they don't know who they are and it's about helping them to find themselves and to believe in themselves again. Uh, at, at the worst point, how how weak and how how thin was was she, um, she was bad. Did she yeah go she down to very, a, very, a very low yeah, weight? Dangerous. When I look back now, um, yeah, she was a dangerously low weight. And what do you think now when you look at photos of her at that time? I, I don't. I, I we threw them all away. Did you really? Yeah, I can't. I can't bear to look at them because it just reminds us of like really bad times. And, and then you look at her now and she's gorgeous. You Well, I've got no doubt about that if she's your daughter. <laughs> really? <laughs> Thank you. And, and her, her twin, twin brother Charlotte. or sister? She's got a sister. A twin sister, that must have been very painful for her too. Yes, I think often or not we forget about the siblings um, as because you're, you're so focused Because you're on, like, oh, yes. is it Charlie? Charlotte. Charlotte. So yeah. Charlotte, she's all right. It's, it's Sam we're worried about. I think all you can do is, and I see it within my work in the parents, you, you just, you're so worried about whether your child's going to eat their next meal or how they're going to do it or, and the time that goes into, you know, supporting them to eat and to sort of come over it and challenge themselves. Often or not, the siblings are sidelined. And Charlotte was for a while. For sure. And, and Sam, Samantha is, is in the movie. Yes, it's Sam and her friend Meg actually wrote the movie 
um, Sam wrote the script, it depicts a typical day for Sam. And it's a serious illness, but they've handled it in a very funny way. They so wanted they, to do so, yes. It. Well, Sam's laughing at herself, really. Yeah, because some of those scenes, I watched, I love that scene in the restaurant as well. That was really hard for her because all of that was real. Yeah. And we went through so many sausage rolls and brownies and <laughs> croissants and I think Meg was desperately trying not to spit them in her face. But, no, that, that was real for Sam. Yeah, and, and so Samantha has a positive relationship with food now. Yes. Very positive. It is everywhere, isn't it? Uh, this, these eating disorders. Are they all connected to OCD or, or, or not, do you think? No, I think mental illness is very unique to the person mm. and each person suffers it in their own way. Uh, I personally think that eating disorders or some forms of eating disorders are a form of OCD because they are obsessive behaviour. Yeah, as, as is addiction, I suppose. Yes. So, look, the clock's against us, but... Um, I know you're working on the next movie. Yes. Uh, is it what's it called? The, the next? A day with anxiety. With Sam anxiety. and Meg are writing it at the moment. And they're back. Yes, they're back, and we're filming it. They're both acting in it, um, and we're filming in October. Fantastic. So, We've yes. got to come back and tell us about that. Yes, we must definitely. meet Sam as well. Yes, and Meg. To. And and um, so, in the short time that we have, you've transformed the, the well-being of your daughter. You've now become one of Britain's most in-demand and respected <laughs> counsellors. You haven't done it the conventional way. You're self-taught, but you're getting results. I yeah. am. Therefore, anybody that's watching, if they're going through a tough time, let's say they're hooked on booze or they're really worried about financial stuff and it's affecting their mental health or they've got an eating disorder, what, what is the first step? What, what do we do as human beings to get better? I think it's to recognise that you need help. Um, within my books, I've written the hope with range, hope with depression, hope with eating disorders, hope with OCD and hope with anxiety. I cover all of those um, subjects that you've just said. So we look at the social media, we look at different types of therapy, we look at um, the different way the um, illnesses manifest themselves. So I'd suggest they go and buy a book.